Okay, we got Back in Black, I Don't Want to Be Alone, and the instrumental Transylvania. Okay. Sweet cops. Well, this is the easiest one so far. I uh, got to go Back in Black. Just love that song. Love how it starts out slow. And that's what I love about a lot of the songs on this, this album. It kind of has a slow roll just builds and uh it's just an epic song it's one that yeah. everybody everybody knows mm -hmm. yeah same black and black uh, in fact we tried rehearsing that about two months ago it's a possibility it's uh it's hard, it's, hard it's, it's a little harder to play than i thought so yeah but same it, with me. You know, yeah yeah back in blacks i i think my second favorite song on this album it's uh it it defines this album not just because it's the title track but it is uh it's going to be played forever as an acdc epitaph and i think it's a statement as to you know they're back and they're in black and it is we didn't lose anything god rest his filthy soul bon scott but he's without him we're still good yeah it really is kind of an entrance track for uh brian yeah. johnson right for sure. Like everybody thinks of Back in Black, they think of him right off the get go. Mm -hmm. So, as much as I do love that Billy Joel song, it actually isn't close. I have to take Back in Black as well. But mm -hmm. shout out to that Billy Joel song. I mean, he's sneaky good in this competition. It's, I'm loving it. it it's a gooder. Good. Actually, yeah. actually, and and I'm going to take mm -hmm. that one step further. I think I would take the Billy Joel song over Back in Black. Wow. And but this this is probably the biggest dark horse song that Billy Joel's ever put out. And I'm only saying that because I didn't actually appreciate it. I owned the album when I was 10 years old. Until I was about 20, I was like, oh my God, this track is so good. It's my second favorite track off the album. I love it. And it was one of those ones that just came on later in my life yeah. that I actually really appreciated. And I mean, I love that song mm -hmm. that I would actually take it over back in black, but it doesn't matter. Wow. I got pounded for one. Nope. Yeah, well, that's um, interesting. To me. It's, it's yeah. too bad yeah. like because we do a rock channel and yet you're saying no thanks to back in black. Well, no, I love I'm it. Actually, I mean, I, I didn't no. say it. Okay. I, I love auto. I love where you're going with that because that to me is what I love is we're all saying it. it we, we like songs for different reasons. The fact you love that yeah. song is, is, is very fascinating to me. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I mean, if that song was up against Given the Dog a Bone, it'd be Billy Joel all the way. <laughs> all right. Okay. I was so going to say, that, going, say, going back to ACDC, I would, when you say that, uh, that, not for like just for the casual fans, not getting the deep cuts, but Highway to Hell and Back in Black are kind of the signature songs for ACDC. And they're kind of bookends in a way. I mean, yeah, for sure they are. That's a good yeah, way. Yeah, those two. But I mean, I I would have to say You Shook Me All Night Long and Hell's Bells as well. But anyways. Mm. Okay, moving on. You Shook Me All Night Long, uh, Slipping With the Television On, and Strange World. Mm, not even, not even cool. Mm. Shook not Me All Night Long, All Day. Yeah. Love, again, yeah. another classic riff and just uh, yeah. a song everybody knows. It's that party song, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Jobber. I mean, shook me all night long. Although I, I can't listen to it. it. It's in the Stairway to Heaven category. I've listened oh, to it too yeah. many times, and so yeah, I'd rather dude. just, you know, I'd rather listen to High Voltage and that, and and listen to something I haven't listened from ACDC in a long time, or Power Ridge, which is still my favorite ACDC album of all time. Shout out to that. Eight hole. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, I knew our AOR. <laughs> ACDC World in Brandon and Winnipeg is insanely, you shook me all night long. And I can't listen to it, but it's by far the best song out of the three of these. Mm -hmm. I, I was trying to take the Iron Maiden to mix it up, but uh, I didn't, the Iron Maiden song is just a mess. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to. I got on. nothing on that. You shook me all night long is the best pop song ACDC ever wrote. So I'll give them that. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. Ooh. Well, what do, you think, what, what do you think is a better pop song they wrote? I don't think that's a pop song. If I were to say, a pop that, song. If I were to say the best ACDC pop song, I'd go Who Made Who. That's the Ooh. other thing I was thinking second or, yeah, you're right. Who Made Who is in I, I would say Thunderstruck. Thunderstruck for me is a pop song. Yeah, now we're opening that, up a That song's just annoying. All right. Anyway, I, I <laughs> let's, let's I, get back on track. Actually, here. hold on. 
Pops, I think Ops is right. Thunderstruck is the only ACDC that was intentionally written for a movie and to be a hit. So, yeah. All right. I'll take it back. <laughs> okay. So roll that almost back. never happens. I'm getting back on track. Thank you. So, getting um, back in black. black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's already won. So, that's right. Back but I do love that Billy Joel song. I can't believe because I hadn't listened to the Billy Joel album for quite some time and it's not in my regular playlist but when i listened to it recently to prepare for this because i do my homework eh? yeah you do eh? yeah it's um i yeah, have bob eh? I, uh, yeah yeah and i just love it but i'm going that. acdc <laughs> even though it's overplayed i still gotta go acdc yeah um just when i hear that song i think of that video where brian johnson's in that old bathtub scrubbing his back with that thing and uh okay that's just weird <laughs> My, doesn't everybody <laughs> think that? No, I don't. Oh. So I'm obviously going to shook me my favorite track on the album, one of my favorite songs of all time. You're not sick of it? But no, no. But here's the thing. I don't think of Brian Scrubbing his back. I think of about eight of us being packed in JT's rabbit, <laughs> coming down from the bush party, all singing You Shook Me All Night Long. Mm -hmm. wow. That's what I think about because that, that happened. I was well, I was just going to say time. that happened, but which time was that? Because that happened more than once, freaking times. Yeah. No, right? but there was one time where we actually fit like eight or nine people in his rabbit because there was like two people on top of me in the yeah. back. Of I his actually truck. do remember that because yeah. I know think why we did that. Actually, did a dare for us and said, "You guys can't get more than five people on that rabbit," and because, we were like, "So, oh yeah, we can." It was eight or nine, I think. Yeah, yeah. that happened. That happened twice. So the first time or the second time, either time, somebody's car had been dead and we had to take a bunch of people and have laps sitting, which was all our friends. The second yeah. time that we figured out this would work was we are somebody and I'm not naming names. It wasn't me or Jobber, but uh, <laughs> somebody else in this group said we could fit a bunch of girls on our lap in the back seat. Don't know who it was. I don't but, there, I but there, uh, I suddenly remember at the beginning, there was eight guys in the car. And the next time we did it, there was like four girls and four guys. And a bunch of people had designs on who was going to be their next girlfriend or date or whatever. Showing off that I could drive down a mountain in a fucking bald, tired <laughs> rabbit because I didn't drink in those days, shockingly. <laughs> And like mm -hmm. my wife said, she goes, when I went to Penticton, we go over to Bell's and, and uh, Autos, and he goes, uh, yeah, it's funny how he never drank the whole time in high school. And she's like, what? <laughs> True. Well, somebody Nobody died. Nobody yeah. died. That's all. That's, that's, I, that's I, on I remember, me in high I school. remember both times being stuffed in that rabbit. So I, I was yeah, there both do. times. Hey, uh, red faced boy didn't puke on you, so you got that one. <laughs> okay, moving on. That was a sweep. That was a sweep. All right, we're five two zero. We have have a drink on me. I don't speak French. Uh, say to toi, you were the one. Mm -hmm. Is that was that yep. close enough, JT? Yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, sanctuary. Um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm still stuck in the rabbit. <laughs> um, I gotta go have it. Don't have get stuck in the rabbit. I've been there, done that. <laughs> Is it the rabbit, rabbit hole, or rabbit warren? I'm, I'm gonna go dr drink on me. That's easy. And uh, on that note, I'm gonna give you the beautiful sunset while you while you discuss amongst yourselves. I have, have an emergency. All right. Okay, okay. Robert, we're watching the sunset. Uh, you got clouds in Penticton. Yeah. Yeah, let's say drink on ACDC. I mean, yeah, it's it's not. It's oh, not my favorite song. I've kind of gotten sick of it, but given the competition. Ooh, that was I a think, slam against Maiden think, at Philly. When I first... Well, I, com I, competition I, in the sense of the songs themselves, okay. not the bands. Right. Attack it on you. In, in, vinyl, <laughs> in vinyl, when I first heard this song, I was kind of surprised of how uh, it, it was more of a... It kind of sounded more like UFO or... Um, you know, Michael Schenker or something. Who? What, have a drink on me? Yeah, I, I loved it because it was bluesy, but it was quick. And that's kind of what Michael Schenker's signature was, was quick bluesy stuff. Then he'd go into something crazy. ACDC kept the meter because Angus is an insane lunatic OCD about keeping the meter. That's why Malcolm died before him. Because he's like, keep playing the meter. Keep playing the meter. 
But so Malcolm did nothing but strum. Sounds quite hard. sinister. <laughs> hey, the guy had devil horns on numerous albums and dressed like a schoolboy until he was seven. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I love you, Angus. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so did you? So I, I love that song. I I think that that song's great because it's uh, I, I re- for me even though you know, the guitars are really cool and they kind of reminisce and other things. Brian's voice is great because he really hits those kind of gravelly throaty levels where his throat closes and it goes really to the highest level. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it's also end. interesting that he didn't say he didn't sing like that with Jordy. No, he never sang like that. With completely Jordy different. Yeah. So I I, lo- I really like that song a lot. It's uh, I I think it's one of my favorites on the album. Top four, top five. <laughs> Did I hear had devil horns and dressed like a schoolboy till he was thirty? Is that what I heard? Yeah. Later. Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> just check. Just checking. Okay. So, uh, my pick. Um, Don't say the French song. <laughs> no, no, no. Although it's not horrible. It's not a horrible French song. It's not great. No. But, and that ACDC song isn't the best ACDC song either. But I am going to pick that because I still like it when I just happen to be hearing it in the car uh, by myself or whatever. But when I am with my buds, that is an awesome song to hear. Mm. It just I brings back to, I, so many memories I, I, and creates new memories. And I that's expect so- to hear it in your living room next time I'm there. Okay, it creates new, it creates new fuzzy memories. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's that's where music has its power. It reminds you of the old days and gives you new ones to to fall back on Definitely. as tomorrow. Okay. That's deep. It's, that is deep. Yeah, it's, it's beauty. <laughs> I, should write, I should write poetry, dude. Yeah, yeah, you should. Uh, Chicks dig it. <laughs> I need all the help I can get. <laughs> so, um, it's a sweep. Have a drink of me. Not even close. So we'll just uh, quickly move on. ACDC is already one with six. Billy Joel, two. Iron Man, zero. But what? of course, we gotta, we got to play it out. So we've got <laughs> Shake a Leg, Close to the Borderline, and Charlotte the Harlot. Ops. Oh, this is a tough one. Uh, shake a leg. Really? I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not honestly none of these songs do I go right on. Um, sometimes it's like uh, least common denominator. I just, I, I, I'm gonna go shake a leg. Got to do it. Okay, fair. Jobber. Jar the harlot. It's, that a boy. No, it's got a. It almost reminds me slightly of Hellbent for Leather. It's got that kind of feel to it. Um, you know, great intro, high energy. I mean, the lyrics are really good. I mean, yeah. it's a no-brainer. Songs about Harley, okay. but uh, it's uh, there's some good things about the Iron Maiden song. But I mean, honestly, like uh, close to the borderline is a killer track. Like you could you can go through the arrangement. And you can look at everything that's going on in it. And it's like we say about high and dry versus on through the night or anything else in, in like Def Leppard or, or, you know, some relative albums is that this song should have been way bigger on, on any other Billy Joel album. But it's so down in the playlist from the bigger songs. But I, I love this Billy Joel song. I'm. I, I was here like wow. 10 times this week. Yeah, we're one, one, one. Wow. wow. You know, I do like that Billy Joel song. I almost called him Billy Idol. That would have been <laughs> weird. Uh, I do like the Billy Joel song, but I'm going ACDC. You're going to shake a leg. Eh? Yeah, it's not the greatest, um, but I still I still am okay with it. The Billy Joel track, it's, it's good, but not where... It seems yeah, to shake like it'd be the last of those three for me. Um, oh, really? I'm going Charlotte the Harlot. So Charlotte the Harlot has two. Shake Leg has two. So JT, you pick close to the borderline. So you're the tiebreaker. Charlotte the Harlot or Shake a Leg? Bro, I'll I'll take Maiden. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got uh, it. Shake the Leg is my least favorite song on on Back and Block. So yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm definitely going yeah. Charlotte the Harlot. Okay, last track. We got Rock and Roll, Ain't Noise Pollution. I don't know the last one because it's kind of boring. Through the Long Night and uh, Iron Maiden. So, okay. I, I keep going back to ACDC all of a sudden. I mean, Rock and Roll, Ain't Noise Pollution. That's such a good song. 
I, I, you know, I love Maiden, but I'm more of a wasted years and run to the hills kind of guy. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. You know, just being honest. Yeah. No, that's cool. Okay. Jobber. Um, I'm going with Iron Maiden on this. <clears throat> I mean, the opening is just pure Maiden. Yeah. Hence the name of the song. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if that was 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 that on purpose? I don't know. Um, I I would say the bass is really sweet. It does have that uh, J, uh, JT. Correct me if I'm wrong here. The Chris Squire influence. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, yeah, yeah. Steve Dude, Harris, Steve Harris wasn't no. sixteenth notes at this point. Like he oh, is one much gonna later. Get edited yeah. right out of yeah. 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 Chords. yeah, you're right. You're right, Jobber. Like two oh. guitars in the band, and the bass is still right front and center, high end. Uh, really Squire high in the mix. When you, when you negotiate the new contract with Frozen Assets, it will be mm -hmm. that when anything is recorded, the bass will be up front or I'm up. Exactly. Look at Which is cool. I'm good with that. As long but as hold on. Do you think they can, so Iron Maiden. <laughs> Chris, not Billy. <laughs> wait, hold on. Iron Maiden couldn't replace Steve Harris. Nobody could. There's no new wave heavy, heavy metal bass. No. Like Steve. So hey, do you think Hold on, do you I think, also was do you think say frozen that, that, assets can replace me? Yes. Uh, I will, I will, I mean, they, they may try. Think there's a better <laughs> bass player than Jobber? No fucking. Oh, no. Hell no. No. Winnipeg, uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe Billy Sheehan. Maybe, maybe. He's maybe. not hanging out in Shinjuku. <laughs> right. It, it's fro it's, fro cool it's frozen assets. Jobber. Are you guys influenced by frozen ghosts? Is that why it's frozen assets? <laughs> We had this uh, conversation uh, in the CanCon uh, episodes. <laughs> How can I Bill, <laughs> They're sponsored by a sperm bank. Well, <laughs> that's exactly what rocks. Well, it. it's because we're we're fro our musical tastes are frozen in the seventies, uh, sixties, seventies, and eighties. So we're all the really good music is but, in the first place. So I was going to say one one right. last last comment on Maiden. The like the chorus is really does kind of cross over into punk rock a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I it, mean there's a lot of kind of Maiden's kind of like Motorhead, where they kind of get close to that. That's a bit of an influence. Yeah, there. agreed on those first two albums for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that rock and roll and noise pollution was uh, the secret track when I first heard it on this album that I loved more than anything, and it because it was so bluesy. And I remember reading an interview with <laughs> Eddie Van Halen when they were early on a tour with ACDC. And he said, one thing you don't know about Angus Young is he is one of the greatest blues guitar players of all time. And he can, when he does, he does warm ups and sound checks, all he does is he plays these blues riffs and Eddie goes, I hadn't even heard half of them. He goes, I'm American, he's Australian. And he said, Angus can lay down the blues in a tasty way. He chooses not to because that's the band's style. And this is the only song to me that really highlights Angus's true, you know, low low beats mm. in it. Dun, dun, mm. dun, 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 dun. Yeah. And it's just like and, and I love Brian's voice on it. And it like this song to me is probably the most underrated ACDC song, mm -hmm. other than Soul Stripper, which is great too, in a oh, different so way. Like, mm -hmm. But but I love Rock and roll. J JT, there's another song by ACDC that's in that same vein, and the name's not coming to me, but it's about going to the show. Yeah. Um, okay. What, I forget the name of that song, but it's so bluesy. Like, it's just, and it's raw. Yeah. It's really raw. I, I, I think that that's how they... The Brian Johnson era? Yes. Yeah, totally. Mm. Mm. I can't think mm. of it. Go uh, maybe it's on show. Click of the Switch. Uh. You're not thinking, <laughs> let me go to the show by Poison, are you? No, 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 no. It'll come to me. <laughs> but thanks. Oh, thanks, that. Otto. You heard your mother. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Rock, where are we? Let, okay, let so me go to... it's okay. my choice. Uh, it's it's not a hard choice for me. Rock and roll ain't noise pollution all the way ACDC. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a great song, but I would go Iron Man. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. But yeah, it, it doesn't matter. I get Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I get that. I did put some time in. I was telling Otto earlier. Yeah. I put some time into Iron Maiden. You listen to it because I had to do my homework. So did I. Actually, out of all really these albums, I listened to that one the most. Here we go. Mm. Group one. Iron Maiden. One. Billy Joel. Two. Destruction. Back in black. Seven. Moving on to the final three. And uh, I guess you want to take us on an outro there, JT. 
We are going into the second round of the best nice. of the 1980, which will be very controversial. Nothing will be more controversial than this episode. Because we're yeah, going to Wizard of Oz versus Kiss Unmasked versus Heaven and Hell by Black Sabbath, EO's first album. And this is going to be 